Welcome to the Healthy Perspective Podcast with your host, chiropractor, entrepreneur, mentor, and author, Dr. Chris Bowman. He'll break down and extract the secret sauce behind his own success and the success of some of the top leaders in every category and from around the world. Get ready for your weekly mental adjustment because shift is going to happen. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Healthy Perspective podcast. Today, we are with um, Dr. Deborah Muth. She's a, a founder of Serenity Healthcare Center. She's a nurse practitioner and also a naturopathic doctor. I was super excited to get Deborah on with me. Um, as a chiropractor, I work very closely um, with a lot of alternative healthcare providers, people that are willing to um, look at uh, a person's health and symptoms differently instead of maybe compartmentalizing a, a gut issue with only, you know, gut or a, an emotional issue with only the, you know, the, the brain. Uh, I feel like people that are trained a little bit outside the medical profession are able to look at the body as a whole and not just each organ, but looking at the organism and recognizing that each organ is important to another organ and everything together is what makes up our, our life experience. And so I'm, I'm super honored, super blessed to have Dr. Deb Muth with us. Um, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Chris. It's happy. I'm happy to be here. So we talked a little bit uh, before and about your journey. Um, why don't you just rehash that just a little bit? You started as a nurse practitioner. Um, you know, have you always wanted to be in medicine or where did that journey start? Actually not. Um, when I was a teenager, I wanted to be an attorney of all things. Oh, wow. okay. <laughs> no offense to anybody listening. That's an attorney, but that's where I wanted to be. Um, and I, I actually fumbled into medicine, um, started out very young as a, uh, CNA worked in a nursing home, took care of people and just really kind of got the love of caring for people. Um, started my career in elderly care, worked a lot with Alzheimer's patients, mm. dementia patients. But what I really found my love in is women's health and um, worked in fertility for many years and realized that the luxury of what I had with a doctor working in fertility, I could only do if I became a nurse practitioner, I couldn't do it as a nurse. And so after I graduated from nursing school, I quickly went on to be a nurse practitioner and started working women's health and just absolutely absolutely loved it. Um, worked with an indigenous population of people that came from other countries and started to learn a lot about other medicines, other types, mm -hmm. herbs, and things like that, that they were using to take care of some of their symptoms during pregnancy and during menopause. And it was intriguing to me. Um, but it wasn't until I got sick myself and I had it narrowed down to two things. I was going to see my primary and I, I knew I was going to walk out of their office with one of two diagnoses, either fibromyalgia, because in the nineties, that was the big diagnosis, mm -hmm. or they were going to tell me I had MS. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, I walked out of their office with a diagnosis of fibromyalgia, a prescription for narcotics, a prescription for antidepressants. And I was told to go home and prepare to be disabled in four years. I was 28 years old. Wow. Wow. And I remember sitting in my car, just sobbing, thinking, oh my God, I just had my child mm -hmm. six months before that. I, my career was just starting. Mm -hmm. How could this possibly be? Um, and I knew there had to be something different there. So back at that point, I had my wacky friends, quote unquote, and um, I used to make fun of them and they were the witchcraft people, right? Mm -hmm. And so I went to them and said, okay, I, I succumb to you guys. You have to know somebody that knows somebody that can help me. And they did. Luckily, they took me under their wing. They taught me about nutrition. They taught me about herbs. They taught me about all this th stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh, we're so missing the boat. And it didn't even dawn on me until I started talking to them that when I was sitting in the doctor's office, it was August in Wisconsin. It was 95 degrees. Mm -hmm. I had a fleece sweater on a long sleeve t-shirt. And when I went into the doctor's office, my temperature was 95. And the tech came in three times with three different thermometers and said, this, this must be broken. Oh, this battery must be bad. And after the third time, he was like, it, I don't know what's going on. And after that, no one made mention of it. And it wasn't until I met one of those alternative docs that they said, that's a problem, Deb. Right. Right. I don't think that's the thermometer being broke. Right. And once we started really digging into what was going on, we diagnosed thyroid issues several yeah. years later. It was an aha moment, like, 
hey, just before I got sick, I had a tick bite that oh, nobody no. said anything about. And, and it just unraveled all these things for me. And I couldn't go back to traditional medicine. And that's when I started into learning naturopathy. I love that story, not for what you had to go through, but for kind of what it represents, you know, for every, um, you know, maybe real diagnosis of fibromyalgia, if you can call it that there is, I mean, there's stories like yours, where it's like the doctors just don't know what's going on. Here's something to numb the mind Mm -hmm. and, and numb the pain. And sorry, like, you know, like, and it, it, it bugs me and I'm sure it bugs you. That's why you got into this profession because it's, it's almost uh, it gives us a look at like what we've done with medicine and healthcare. It's like, we've industrialized. If you don't fit within this conveyor belt, you know, you're just kind of taken off and thrown into the misfits parts. Uh, you know what I mean? Or it's like, you don't fit, you're an anomaly, you know, there you go. But the problem is every person on this assembly you know, is, is now being diagnosed with something asthma is normal. I'm sure you saw that the developmental milestones, they just, mm-hmm. you know, changed like overnight, like, no, like we've been doing research for 10 years and we found out that we were expecting them to walk too early or crawl too early, or we actually crawling isn't even important anymore. I don't even think that's a milestone um, under the new CDC recommendations, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm so, I just want to say, I'm so thankful for people like you that don't just settle you know, but know that there has to be something more. How did you find it within you? Because I think one of the popular things, and especially, in, you know, in the, in the Midwest, I don't know, I guess you're North, North Midwest, maybe. I don't know if you still consider yourself Midwest. Yeah. Um, but where like going outside of your doctor's advice feels off, right? It, it kind mm-hmm. of feels like you're, you're disobeying or not respecting the things that they say. How did you overcome that, especially as a female? Because I think a lot of females get treated Um, kind of like that, especially by male doctors, where it's like, it's in your head, here's these things, go, go, you know, do this and that and kind of just get dismissed. How did you find it within you to overcome that? Well, I think one of the best things that I was born with was being a rebel. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I I am the the person who lives to prove somebody wrong if they tell me I can't do something. (laughs) And so that's part of it for sure. But the other part was for me to say, I am 28 years old. I live in a community where there's five women in my subdivision that are diagnosed with MS. Wow. There's a problem here. And I yeah. watched how they lived and I was like, there's no way I'm doing this. There is no way. I, I just wasn't willing to accept it. And that's what I would say to anybody, like, don't be willing to accept a diagnosis at first glance, because oftentimes they could be wrong, yeah. especially things like fibromyalgia or even MS. If they're, if they're only diagnosing it by a brain MRI in my world, it's Lyme or infection until proven otherwise. Wow. And so I, I think talking to other people and having the background that I had helped, like mm-hmm. I could talk to other doctors and talk to other people. Right. And they, they would say things that I had other friends and colleagues that I could reach out to. If I didn't have that, I don't know that I would have felt so comfortable doing that. Um, but I would say, don't give up like mm-hmm. to, to everyone that's listening out there with a diagnosis of your symptoms don't give up until they can prove there's an answer that causes those symptoms, because there's always a reason for the symptoms we have. And it's not necessarily the diagnosis that somebody has been labeled with. Right. Now, you know, I think where a lot of, you know, maybe ladies especially get pigeonholed is like, you just had your kids six months ago, you Mm -hmm. weren't going to school or you didn't have time for, you know, I have three kids. So I know what it's like to, Mm -hmm. you know, constantly be distracted and, and all of those things. Someone that doesn't have a medical background like you did, you know, you knew how to ask different questions and and whatnot. Um, I I think what's, what's happened is we took, you know, maybe 20, 30 years ago model of where you did trust your doctor because medicine wasn't industrialized. There Mm -hmm. was a genuine care. Your family doctor was like one of your friends, like, you know what I mean? Like just part of the family. So we're combining that mentality with modern medicine. And I think that's where people are getting the worst of both worlds, medications that didn't work and impersonal care where that person cares about you. Cause I don't think anybody gets a medicine, not caring about people, but has so much on their plate and the system is so broken that they can't actually pay personal attention. I think that's a paradigm shift that would help people a lot, especially with the availability of information out there. You know, before you can only get information if you know how to read a medical textbook or you go to school. Now you have the internet, which is a double-edged sword. How do you advise people to, um, 
maybe go like research stuff on their on their own. Like, how do you research? Do I have Lyme or do I have multiple sclerosis or, you know, those sort of things? Because there's with all the information, there's stuff that you like to trust and then obviously stuff that you shouldn't. Um, how do you recommend people educate themselves? Absolutely. You know, I think the internet, internet, like you said, is a double-edged sword. It is amazing. We can learn anything. We can YouTube anything, Mm -hmm. but also in that there can be some false information and it's hard sometimes to sift through and figure out what's real and what's not, especially today with everything being censored. If you Mm -hmm. go to Google and I want to look up something about COVID, I only get the mainstream information. I get nothing else unless I go to a different search engine tool like DuckDuckGo. So I, I would say at this point, if you're looking at medical information, go to DuckDuckGo, or you can do Google Scholar where you can actually see um, research articles. Oftentimes the abstracts are written for anybody to understand and read. They're pretty simple. If you dig down into the study, it can be a little bit more difficult if you're not used to reading that, but those are great resources. And remember, the only thing you're trying to do with that information is educate yourself, Mm. is to put yourself a step further. You're not trying to diagnose yourself with that, but you want to go armed into your provider and say, I've, I've looked at this. Here's where my symptoms fit. Cause sometimes the reality is we have these symptoms, but we can't put words to them. We don't know what to call them or how to describe them. And the internet, a lot of times allows us to put words to what we're feeling. And that's helpful for us as practitioners to be able to decipher what you're doing and what, what you've tried and those kinds of things. So I think that's super important, but then go and have that conversation with your doctor. And, and I would tell people this out of the gate, if your doctor is dismissing you or they're not listening to you, or they're not willing to go in this journey with you, fire them, Mm. find a doctor that's willing to do that for you. And, and I don't mean that in any disrespect to physicians, because you're right. Our system is broken. And a lot of times their hands are tied when they work for large organizations. They can only do certain things. They can only spend so much time. They can't refer you outside of their system. It's challenging sometimes to work inside that system. Um, But if you're not feeling like your doctor's listening or hearing what you're saying or working with you as a partner, you have every right to find a different one. I love that. And and thank you for saying that because I think it does empower people. You know, they a lot of times people are thinking on that track. This person's not helping me. I've gone five times. They've given me a different drug. They don't seem like they want me there, but I don't know what else to do. It's okay to say I'm done with that person. And like we talked about earlier, like the, the internet is a beautiful thing. And, you know, as much bad that came with COVID, I think there's probably just as much good or more where now you I'm living in Southern California. We could probably be having a telehealth conversation right now if I was having symptoms. And so you're not limited to um, if you live in, I mean, I'm sure, you know, Wisconsin has some very small towns with a couple thousand people where you're not going to get the type of medical care as you could, you know, maybe in De- Detroit or Chicago or, you know, uh, San Diego or LA. Um, but now people have access to people like you where they could get help and you can ship whatever supplements or whatever tests or, you know, anything like that, that you want. And so I think, um, what, what I would say and, and what I always try to, you know, talk with my patients about, because I'm limited with what, what I do from a nutrition or, or diagnostic perspective. I, I have a lane that I stay in um, and, and I use people like you to help me, you know, with the other aspects of, of what, you know, might be going on is if, if you're getting information either from a doctor or from the internet that has the, the like the vibe or the energy of fear. Mm-hmm. You know, like t- turn away from that because that's not going to help you make a decision out of abundance or a decision out of um, uh, uh, looking ahead. Your every decision that you're going to make is you're going to buy whatever they have for sale at the end of it because you're worried that that's the only way to help. You know, recognize that you do have time, you do have resources there to help you. People like like Dr. Deb here that that would be more than willing to help you. Um, if you just ask the right questions. And so that's, that's what I think we can use the internet for is, is just arm yourself. Like she said, to, to ask the right questions, you know, instead of looking for a diagnosis, even look at how do I explain these symptoms? You know, that might help mm-hmm. someone like Dr. Deb, um, you know, dig a little bit deeper. And, you know, cause instantly when she was talking about her symptoms, that my first thought was it's most likely a thyroid problem and there's probably a secondary infection. So if you're able to explain you know, I'm always cold or, you know, whatever it is that, that helps us. Um, Dr. Deb, you know, I know you work with mainly with, you know, with women's health, um, mm-hmm. but obviously working with these women, 
you're obviously, you know, talking about them and their life, their kids and, you know, that sort of a thing. As a pediatric chiropractor, I'm seeing very different trends in our kids, you know, mm -hmm. today um, versus even just a couple of years ago. Uh, and I'm sure that correlates to, to you know, um, health during prenatal, um, you know, time, mm -hmm. health postpartum, health with the moms. What kind of trends are you starting to see come out of the stress and, and fear-based, I don't know, time season that we've been in with, with COVID with our kids and with our families? Absolutely. That's a great question. And, and I'm blessed to have multiple practitioners that work for me. So I have male specialists. I have myself who's a female specialist. And then I have two pediatric specialists, wow. um, one that focuses on autism and spectrum disorders and another one that treats generalized medicine. But um, what we've been seeing a lot in, in families in general, a lot of anxiety, a yeah. lot of stress um, on, on everybody, right? The moms from homeschooling and working from home and the dads from trying to manage everything. And the kids are so anxious and, um, and there's some social development things that are happening in that, you know, some of our spectrum kids are struggling because they can't go to school the same way they used to. They can't see their friends the same way they're used to a lot of issues with, um, IQ, actually mm -hmm. the loss of facial recognition, not being able to see our mouth move when we speak. So we're seeing delayed speech in some of these kids. Um, it is really a, a challenge right now. Um, that isolation is really causing a ton of depression for people. Mm. Um, and the lack of, you know, lack of support. There's a lot of, um, divided families. Unfortunately, everybody has different views on what's happening with the pandemic. And that is dividing families, which is causing more and more stress and more and more depression and anxiety and insomnia and just a, a whole host of problems that we're going to have to deal with on the backside of this whole pandemic and our kids with their learning capabilities and their social skills. It is going to be a challenge for us. Yeah. It's, it's scary seeing, you know, the effects of stress on our, on our adults, you know, especially probably yes. your male specialists that mm -hmm. are just seeing the effects of a, a job that they don't like for five, 10 years. And, and the things that they're starting to experience imagine that now starting 20 years earlier, like what yeah. we're going to see in our kids when they, when their hormones start going crazy with puberty and, you know, all of that mm -hmm. stuff. Um, so I think people like us are on the, you know, that maybe the emergency medicine is on the front lines the past couple of years, but I think the, the, you know, pendulum is going to switch now where we're going to be on the front lines of helping these kids kind of really pull out and, and, mm -hmm. and come ahead rather than, um, settle for a new normal of, of health, you know, yeah. um, what are some things as, as we kind of close up here, what are some things that parents, um, ladies can be cognizant of, um, like what are the most missed things that are affecting people's health? Um, like for example, um, the guys that come in and I see the crease in their back pocket from always wearing their wallet, mm -hmm. sitting down, messing up their, their hips. Like that's something that I would say is a common thing. That's like, people don't think about that. It could be affecting their health. What are some things that, you know, we'll just stick with your specialty that, that ladies are um, commonly overlooking that they might do every day or routinely that, that are, are uh, something that you eliminate or something that you add right away when somebody is, is consulting with you? Absolutely. I would say first and foremost, it's insomnia. Mm -hmm. You know, we blow off this, I can't sleep um, from stress or from working too much or you know, I have too much on my plate, but that is a huge symptom for us to say, okay, something's going on and sleep is a snowball effect. If you can't sleep, it's a downward cycle for us. The other thing I would say is anxiety is a big one too. If you start feeling anxious, you start feeling revved up. Um, and in any way you start feeling like heart palpitations, that's a number one sign for us that we're seeing some hormonal issues begin. Mm. And we want to get on top of that sooner than later even in the male categories with all of the stress, we are seeing testosterone levels fall earlier. And the same thing for women, because of the stress, we're starting to see hormones decline. Part of it's an adrenal issue mm -hmm. and they don't have that reserve like they used to. But those are two really big things that I would say, don't ignore those things. Don't let them get to the point where you're flatlined and you have no energy because you haven't slept decently in six months 
or you're so anxious that you can't function during the day, there are very easy things that we can do to fix those things. You know, anxiety, there's a great product called Gabatrox that everyone can use if they have anxiety. We used to use it a lot for people flying and they would get nervous when they fly. Mm. But now we tell people, have it around. And if you're starting to feel anxious, pop a chewable tablet. It'll deflate you in about 10 minutes. There really are no side effects to it. Pretty much anybody can use it. But it's a great thing to have if you're feeling anxious and worked up and nervous about everything that's going on that you have to get done in the day. That's amazing. Thank you for that tip. And and Mm. I would agree. 100%. Hundred percent. You know, I have an intake form. I'm sure, like you do as well. Mm-hmm. And we talk about kind of more musculoskeletal issues, but then we ask about auxiliary things. You know, okay. anxiety is on there. I don't think I've seen an intake with people coming in with neck pain, back pain, like unrelated, in the in the past probably six months that didn't have anxiety checked. Mm-hmm. It's just like this normal thing. And so I'll ask them about it. Like, so you checked anxiety. What's going on with that? Oh, it's just something that I have. I take a medication. It's fine. Like, you know, and there's overriding or a write, writing it off that this is, mm-hmm. this is normal. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm here for my neck pain or, you know, whatever mm-hmm. it is. Um, so I, I think you're right. Like, don't, don't overlook what that anxiety, because ang- hor- our, our emotions, our hormones, hormones are just chemical mixtures that the brain is interpreting and assigning meaning to. So, which means if you have anxiety, y- your brain is interpreting, there's too much of something. Mm-hmm. It, it's overworking somewhere. Like, instead of just like, oh, this is something that's faulty within me like there's a reason your brain is interpreting hormones and chemicals in that way it's not yeah not by chance or not um not by accident yeah and it's it's so easy for us you know in in our conventional world of medicine we just throw some xanax at somebody or we throw some paxil at somebody and say here you go you'll be fine in our world we say okay let's figure out what's causing these symptoms to be there and it's super simple to do a urine sample and test what we call neurotransmitters so we can actually see which things are too high and which things are too low and we can give amino acids and Instead of drugs to manipulate them and get them back to where they need to be while we're adjusting diet and lifestyle and a few other things. And for kids, this is beautiful. Like if you have a kid that has attention deficit or behavioral issues, this stuff works like in four to six weeks, you will see turnaround. It is so quick with them. Adults tend to be a little bit more tough. We take a little longer, Mm -hmm. but even still you're talking like eight to 12 weeks, you're going to start to see changes with that. And you don't have to use a medication and you don't have to worry about it affecting your liver or your kidneys or have a stigma around it because you're actually fixing the problem of what's been happening in your body in the long term, And it's so simple to do. Right. And that's the sad thing. You know, it's so simple yet. It's Mm -hmm. so overlooked, you know, for every you, there's a thousand or 2000, you know, NPs or medical doctors or pediatricians or psychiatrists that are dishing out, you know, the, the big pharma way of, of handling it. And um, it's, it's sad. It's, it's terrible. Cause I look at those things too. Like, so I'll have, you know, somebody come in with colic, the kid's been having it for 16 hours a day crying and, and the oh. uh, pediatricians are ready to give an antidepressant or, you know, something like that to a, a young kid, like a, a six yeah. month old or eight month old. And mm-hmm. it's like, Oh, it's easy. Just let's just do this and this and this. And, you know, sure enough, within a week or two, like that stuff is gone. The parents are like, what the heck? You know, like it's so easy when you look at the problem differently. You're not looking at it as how do I make them stop crying, but give them what they need and they'll stop crying naturally. Like the body wants to be in a state of balance. It wants to be in a state of ease. We just have to figure it out what's what's triggering it to stay in that state of stress. Absolutely. Well, if people um, you know, are interested in this, this conversation, want to know more from you, um, how do they find out more about you if they're interested in, in maybe a consultation um, or anything like that? Uh, how can they get a hold of you? Absolutely. So you can reach me at serenityhealthcarecenter.com. That's our business website. I'm also on social media, Serenity Healthcare Center. Um, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, we have a lot of videos on our YouTube channel that you can start to learn information and learn different things that's all free there. Um, Feel free to reach out and talk to my staff. I have great staff. They'll answer any questions that you have. Um, Sometimes it's scary looking at somebody for the first time and not knowing if it's going to be a good fit or Mm -hmm. who within the practice is a good fit. And my team is awesome at making sure you get with the right person for what you need. Awesome. Thank you. Well, I'm excited for all the people that are going to listen to this, that it's going to shift their perspective. It's going to hopefully empower them to either fire the current medical system that they subscribe to and start looking at their crazy, you know, wacky friends or, you know, looking at um, life through a different lens, I, I think is, is ultimately what's, what's needed. And I'm thankful for you taking the time out joining me. I know we've scheduled this like a month and a half ago. So both of our schedules are super busy, but 
it's conversations like this that will send the ripple effect to change the world. So I'm thankful for you. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Healthy Perspective Podcast. To connect with Dr. Bowman, follow him on Instagram at Dr. Chris Bowman. Until next time, make shift happen.